Hello everyone and welcome back this is Doc Ed Padama and this time we are going to discuss the formulation of a correlational research title with its corresponding statement of the problem or SOP. This is usually applicable in the creation of what we call an action research. Okay, wherein you are required to produce a specific and concrete output based from the problem that you are investigating so this is very relevant to teachers who are writing uh, their proposed action research so before we continue again i would like to ask uh, for your help to please go to my youtube channel and click subscribe and also click that notification bell to alert you when a new video has been uploaded and if you are already a subscriber of our channel please click the like button for this particular video. So to start off with our discussion, I am also going to provide with a sample title that we can work on. Again, this is a hypothetical uh, title that we are going to use. So um, we are not going to go into the details of how simple or how complicated the titles are and so on and so forth. I am going to explain the main concept, the idea, and simplify them so you can already craft your own research title. So, in, in uh, general, the idea when we talk about correlational research, these are studies or researches uh, that investigates the relationship of two variables. Again, correlational research is a, a study, a research that investigates the relationship of two variables. Now, correlational research, again, focuses on the relationship. If you are going to investigate another area of relationship, which is you're going to investigate the cause of one variable to another val variable, this is different from correlation, uh, correlational research. This is what we call causal correlation. The cause of one variable and its effect to another variable. Again, this particular type of investigation will fall under causal correlation. So that's another area. Okay, so we are going to focus on the relationship of two variables. Now, since we're talking about variables, we are going to present two uh, sample variables that I have already formulated ahead of time. And this is variable number one and variable number two. Variable number one is teacher's competency and variable number two is teacher's satisfaction. So if you are going to analyze and evaluate the objective or the goal of your research is already somewhat uh, clear. The direction is already uh, laid out to you by identifying the variable. So in this case, you want to identify the relationship, if there is any relationship between the competency of teachers and their satisfaction. Are they related to each other? If the teacher's competency is high, does it follow that the satisfaction is high? Or if the competency or the satisfaction is low, does it follow that the, satis uh, the, the satisfaction is low? Does it follow that the competency is also low? So these are the possibilities that we, uh, the result that the, we might get from conducting this particular study. So these are the possible outputs. So we need to prove what, what particular specific uh, correlation or relationship of these variables or what, do, uh, what specific relationship do they have. Okay, that is why we are conducting this particular study. Okay, now the output, since this is what we call, again, as I mentioned earlier, an action research, we are going to include a specific output for this one. So the, the specific objective or output of your study is to enhance teacher's benefits. You can also revise this, enhance the output by uh, producing a program for training or a plan or a framework. So again, all of this might focus on teacher's training instead of 
enhancing the benefit. So again, these variables can be uh, replaced by other variables aside from teacher's benefits. If you do not want it to be your the basis of your output, you can use the choices that I presented earlier. Okay, now the title, if we're going to put all of these variables and output together, will be teacher's competency and satisfaction towards the enhancement of teacher's benefits. Observe. Some, some uh, research titles usually include the term relationship or correlation. Relationship or correlation. Okay? Since we're doing correlational research. I in this case, in order to maximize the number of key terms that you are using in your title, you just specify the variables. You just reflect the variables in your title. So in this case, the variables that we have here are already complete. You have teacher's competency and refers to the correlation already to teacher satisfaction. Correlation of competency with satisfaction towards or geared to the enhancement of teacher's benefits or whatever output you want to put, to put or place on this particular part. So instead of presenting it as the correlation between the teacher's competency and the teacher's satisfaction in crafting an enhancement for teacher's benefit. This would be direct to the point, simpler and clearer to understand. Now, uh, the discussion regarding the research design that you're going to use, which is correlational, can be discussed within the manuscript. You can place the design. It will always be placed and discussed in the manuscript so you do not need to reflect it in your research title okay so i hope you also um, try to apply this when you write your research proposal title so that again you can maximize the number of keywords that you want to use in your research title so again this is very simple direct to the point and clear with regard to the proposed research title that we have as a sample okay now formulation of the statement of the problem a a little uh, background of uh, a statement of the problem the statement of the problem is composed of two parts the general problem and the specific problem because there are manuscripts that i see wherein they go directly to the specific problems without stating the general problem Okay, so the general problem is cascaded and lifted directly from your research title. So in this case, this is the general problem and the following will be the specific problem. So based on this one, the part, the first part of the statement of the problem, uh, the, gen the general problem is stated as the following, this part. The aim of the study is to investigate and then start with your research title teacher's competency investigate the teacher's level of competency and satisfaction you already have your competency and satisfaction as a basis in the enhancement of teacher's benefits so again as i mentioned earlier the, the general problem this part was just cascaded from your research title you just indicate there here that the aim or the goal of your study is to what Okay, so this is a general statement of the direction or the goal of your research. This is the general problem. This one. Now, the specific problem, you can, you can use this particular, uh, particular uh, style in writing. You can just directly say specifically, okay, without adding any other uh, words on this particular part. Specifically, it tries to answer the following. Number one. How do you formulate the SOP? Now, this is very, very crucial. Uh, if you have already confirmed that your title is approved, now, if you are conducting a correlational research, the first thing that you need to uh, consider is that the variables, again, the variables in your title should be reflected in your specific problems. So these are the specific problems. That is why it is important that uh, you try to 
uh, make sure you have a copy of your title while formulating your specific problem. So these are the crucial parts in formulating your research proposal, the title, and the SOP, the statement of the problem. Okay. Now, there's a pattern that you can use. There's a template that you can use. So I hope you can also implement this in your study. Number one, again, as I mentioned earlier, make sure that the variables of your title are reflected in your statement of the problem. Number one, start with the teacher's competency. You want to know what is the teacher's competency. So I used here is, what I used is the level of teacher's competency. What is the level of the teacher's competency? Okay, what is the level of the teacher's competency? So we have already covered the first variable. Cover the, covering the second variable, you just uh, formulate a question that will identify the, the sat teacher satisfaction. So in SOP number two, or specific problem number two, what is the level of teacher satisfaction? So number one is competency. The second one is you identify the level of teacher satisfaction. We have already covered two variables. Now, going towards the next part of the formulation of the SOP, now that you have stated the two variables, teacher satisfaction and teacher's competency, since this is a correlational research, you already compare the two variables. So you just state this particular question. What is the significant relationship between, I, I just uh, shortened the format. So instead of writing teacher's competency, I used SOP1 and SOP2 for teacher satisfaction. What is the significant relationship between SOP1 and SOP2? But my advice that you, you write them as a whole. Do not use SOP1 and SOP2, okay? So again, we have already established the level of competency, level of satisfaction, and then we have already compared the two variables, which is the objective of our research design, correlational research. We have already correlated them. Then, the fourth one, if you, you observe, this is... This is in the form of, you can collect this data through the use of interview. Okay? Or you can even use FGD. Focus group discussion. But basically, these are questions. You're going to use questions inst instead of survey questionnaire forms. Uh, you're going to use questions and implement this through interviews or focus group discussion. I'm going to explain later why you have to do this. So you ask the challenges encountered by the teachers relevant to their competency and satisfaction. So what are the challenges the teachers encountered with regard to their competency and satisfaction? Again, you formulated SOP number four because this will be the basis of SOP number five. You will be able to formulate, craft your uh, enhancement of teacher's benefits through the answers in SOP number four. Okay? And then together with the uh, support of the relevance or significant relationship or the relationship of SOP1 and SOP2, this number five, the formulation of the enhancement of teacher's benefit will be strengthened with the significant relationship or correlation of the two variables. So again, you use this interview in order to have a basis on getting answers on how to enhance teacher's benefit. And this will be strengthened by the significant relationship the statistical data analysis that will be taken from SOP number three. So basically, this is the template that we usually do when we formulate and conceptualize statement of the problems or specific problems related to correlational study. So again, as you can see, this is the flow on how to formulate your correlational research. So you have the variables, and then you have the output if this is an action research, and then you have the title based from the variables, 
and then you formulate the two parts of your SOP. So this is the general problem cascaded from the title of your research. And then from this, make sure that you reflect the variables from your research title. You have competency here, competency here, satisfaction here, satisfaction here, and that enhancement of teacher's benefit also found in SOP number 5. So number 3 is you correlate the two, SOP 1 and SOP 2. Number 4 is you interview the teachers with regard to the challenges they encountered in competency and satisfaction and then formulate the output of your research. So this is the recap of what we have already presented. And again, you will be able to use this template in formulating the specific problem when you craft your own research proposal or action research proposal. I am sure of that. So with this, again, dear uh, friends, teachers, students who are listening to us right now in this video discussion, I would like again to ask for your help for my YouTube channel to please, please, Click that subscribe button and click that notification bell to alert you when a new video has been uploaded. On, and on the side of your video, you're going to see recommended videos that you can use in writing the other parts of your research from chapters 1 to chapter 5. So again, thank you very much everyone for listening. And I hope you recommend our videos to your friends, your colleagues who are also writing their research. So we can also help them learn. Thank you, God bless, and see you on our next video. Goodbye.